They are also defending democracy by not allowing their constituents to vote for anyone else besides the person that they want. The defenders of democracy, the Democratic Party of America, not only taking their opponents off ballots and arresting them, but ensuring that the one candidate that they want is the only one that is on the ballots. Yes, in addition to taking Donald Trump off the ballots in Colorado and Maine and attempting it in several other places, they are also ensuring that Joe Biden, the decrepit 81-year-old president of the United States, is the only Democrat that appears on ballots in certain states. Defending democracy. It's, it's democracy if we tell you if it's democracy, but not if we do things that are anti-democracy. This is from ABC News. Not only are many of President Joe Biden's most high-profile Democratic challengers having difficulty making a dent in the national polling, they're also running into a snafu in their efforts to get on the ballot in the first place. Representative Dean Phillips, author Marianne Williamson, and progressive commentator Chank Uger have encountered roadblocks when trying to get onto the ballot. Just get on to the ballot. Specifically in states like Florida, Tennessee, North Carolina, Massachusetts. In other words, the party that is so just defending dem We love democracy. Not only <laughs> is kicking their opponent off the ballot, arresting several of their political opponents, and putting them in front of Trump. By the way, Trump is in court twice this week. He was in court yesterday, and I think will be in court either today or tomorrow on two different things, literally the same week of the Iowa caucus. Holy cow. And we're supposed to believe that this is not political, which is, again, I, I don't know how you get people to buy into that. Anyways, outside of arresting <laughs> and taking your opponent off the ballot, they're also defending democracy by not allowing their constituents to vote for anyone else besides the person that they want. You know, what's the old adage? Accuse your opponents of that which you are doing. I've never seen a better example of that than this. Democrats, lefties in general, saying the right or conservatives or the Republicans are trying to destroy democracy. If we elect Donald Trump, democracy will be lost, while at the same time doing all of the things that banana republics without democracy do. And I don't know if it's a strategy to just keep accusing the other side of a thing that they're doing, or if it's total ineptitude. I, like, I genuinely don't know. I know for a fact there are people in my own life that have said things or posted things that make me understand, oh my gosh, you don't get it. If you were looking at this as objectively as possible, as, let's just, for example, Alan Dershowitz is, life, lifelong Democrat, uh, voted for and worked with Obama, will vote for Joe Biden in the upcoming election, saying, hey, uh, the whole Trump indictment stuff is a bunch of crap and looks like a political persecution. Sorry, prosecution, but also persecution works too. If you have an objective view of all of this stuff, it's difficult to look at the situation and go, yes, this makes sense outside of just a political prosecution. And on top of that, the people parroting the idea of, well, it's the Republicans and the right that are destroying democracy. But on the Republican ticket, Outside of Democrats taking Trump off the ballot, anybody who wants to be on the ballot is on the ballot. I would guarantee you the majority of Republicans, by a lot, do not want Chris Christie on the ballot. There's no reason that Chris Christie should be on the ballot. The RNC doesn't want him on the ballot. The big major donors don't want him on the ballot. Even your never Trumpers don't want Chris Christie on the ballot, and yet he is. So when it comes to democracy and who is allowing constituents to have their say in said democracy, which side is not letting that happen?